WikiHow articles includes 1. How to get a nighttime snack without anyone knowing 2. How to be a mature preteen 3. How to cope with not having a cell phone 4. How to give your life a Mackie over, teen girls 5. How to be the best girl ever 6. How to choose what you want to be when you grow up How to get a nighttime snack Without anyone knowing Download article Author info Last updated, the 7th of December, 2023 Are you hungry in the middle of the night, but you don't want to wake up your parents And have them yell at you here are a few simple steps and tips to help you be a sneaky snack taker. Just remember, this can get you in a lot of trouble if your parents are strict. Things you should know. Wear fuzzy socks to keep your feet as quiet as possible when you walk. Take a flashlight with you to the kitchen to avoid putting on any lights. Open doors and cabinets as quietly as possible. Keep your bedroom door open until you return with snacks so you don't have to open it twice. Part 1. Sneaking out of your room. Download article. 1. Put on some socks. Fuzzy ones work the best, however, any socks will do. Why? Should you put on socks? Well. Socks keep your foot bones from pounding on creaky stairs. They also keep your feet from sticking to the floor, which can make noise when you lift your foot up. 2. Open the door as quietly as possible. If you're noisy, you could wake your parents up. Do not close the door. You can do that once you get your snack. 3. Avoid walking down the middle of a staircase. Usually, the middle part makes the most noise, so walk down the sides, with your back facing the wall. 4. Make your way over to the kitchen slowly and without making any noise. Take a flashlight with you. That way, you can see where you are going. Part 2. Getting your midnight snack. Download article. 1. Open the fridge or cabinet door slowly. Do not turn the lights on. It will give you away. Before you start pushing things around looking for something and making noise, take a glimpse at the food and push things away slowly, then grab your food. If it is in a package, Hold it in your mouth for this next step. 2. If you have stairs, go up them the way you came down them. If not, then go to your room the way you came. Be sure to close the door and leave everything the way it was before you came down, otherwise, your parents might become suspicious. 3. Be careful in your room. Once safely in your room, go under your covers or some other place you can eat, and eat your food quietly. If it is in packaging, open it slowly, don't rip it up. 4. four. If you find it easier, you can move to a different empty room, preferably furthest away from your parents' room. There, even if you accidentally make a noise they most likely won't hear it. If you have a room on another floor, for example, a guest room, you can eat your snack there. Depending on your house, you can even go to the basement. 5. Clean up all the evidence the next morning. If your parents see the wrappers, or anything else, you could get busted. If your parents see the evidence, have a reasonable story. Community Q&A Question What if I am scared of the dark? Community Answer Take a flashlight to help create some light. Just be brave, it is your own home. 
nothing is going to harm you there. Not helpful 65 helpful 182. Question. What if your room is in the basement? Community answer. Just follow the same steps in the article above. It makes no difference where your bedroom is, the steps still apply. Not helpful 51 helpful 125. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. If you choose to prepare a meal, such as an easy mac, do so quietly. You probably can't get away with this if your parents sleep on the same floor as the kitchen. If you use a microwave, press clear or stop right before it is done, to avoid the beeping noise. Make sure your parents are completely asleep before you attempt this. Show more tips. Tips from our readers. You should try to avoid midnight snacks that involve heating things up. No matter how quiet you try to be when running the microwave, it will make noise. And some microwaves are smart which means your parents may have apps on their phones that tell you when they're in use. Once you have the snack in your hand, hide it in your clothes for the walk back to your room. If your parents see you, they won't know you have a snack. You can. Also bring a glass of water back with you so you can say you were getting a drink. If you're opening the fridge, do so from the side, not the top. While opening it, push onto the door to reduce the noise. You can practice this in the daytime beforehand so you can really get it right. If you have linoleum floors outside your bedroom door into the kitchen, wear socks and slide your feet as you walk to avoid making stomping or creaking sounds. Keep a fork and a spoon hidden in your room just in case you get a late night craving for something that requires utensils. If you're eating something in a plastic wrapper that makes noise, unwrap it slowly under your pillow to muffle the sound. How to be a mature preteen. Download article. Parts. 1. Being a good communicator. 2. Being respectful. 3. Being thoughtful. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Cesar de Leon, M.ed. Last updated, the 15th of December, 2023 approved. As a preteen, you may feel like everyone still treats you like a child, even though you're on your way to being a teenager. Acting more mature can help you get some of the independence and trust that you're looking for. Communicate openly and calmly with the adults in your life and do your best to follow the rules that they have laid down for you. Being considerate and doing kind things for others also shows you're mature. Part 1. Being a good communicator. Download article. 1. Share your feelings with your parents. When your parents or guardian ask how you're doing, respond honestly. If you're sulking around because of a fight with a friend, fill them in. You don't need to go overboard with the details if you don't feel comfortable. 1. Take it a step further and initiate the conversation yourself. This shows that you have the maturity to know when you need to ask for help. If you're having a problem, say something to your parent like, Dad, I'm having a problem with a friend, and I want to get your Advice. Can we talk? 2. Remain calm during arguments. Arguments will happen with your parents or friends from time to time, but they don't have to blow up into a screaming match. Avoid yelling and try to remain calm. If you're feeling agitated, 
try taking a few deep breaths. Walk away and come back to the argument later if you're getting really angry. 2. Keep your body relaxed. Avoid crossing your arms, tapping your feet, or clenching your fists. These actions can make you look aggressive. If you disagree with your parent, try to see the situation from their point of view. 3. Be a good listener. If you want to look more mature, listen. When someone is talking to you, give them your full attention. Repeat what they're saying in your own words, and not every now and then to show you're listening carefully. 3. Ask the speaker open-ended questions. These are questions that can't be answered with yes or no. For example, if your mom is telling you about her project at work, you could ask, what was the hardest part of that project? Say things like I see or I understand every now and then to show you're paying attention. 4. Answer your phone. Keep your phone on you at all times so friends and family can reach you. If your parents call you or shoot you a text, be sure to respond as soon as you can. That means within the next minute or so, not the next hour. It'll show you're responsible, plus it'll keep them from worrying. 4. Switch your home energy to OVO and join the Power Move Challenge to use your energy at greener times of the day. You'll get money off your energy bills and help take pressure off the grid. Smart meter required. Sponsored by OVO. Part 2. Being respectful. Download article. 1. Respect your parents' rules. Yes, some of your parents' or guardians' rules. Might not make sense, but you should follow them if you want to seem mature. If your parents ask you to be in bed by 8.30 p.m. every night, make sure you do it. Without any whining or complaining. 5. If you break a rule, apologize to your parents, and take full responsibility for your actions. Say something like, I'm sorry. That I didn't clean my room before going over to Dan's house. It won't happen again. Accept any punishments without a tantrum. 2. Do what your parents ask right away. If your parents or guardian ask you to sweep the floor or clean the litter box, do it as soon as possible. Avoid moaning or groaning. Don't try to show off your obedience either by saying, look how good I'm being. Quietly doing what you're told is a huge mark of maturity. 6. 3. Finish your homework on time. Get your homework done every night on your own. Your parents shouldn't have to nag you they don't like it, and you don't like it. Getting your homework done shows that you're mature enough to manage yourself, which your parents will 100% appreciate. Plus, your teachers will also think you are mature. 7. 8. Try to get your homework done first thing when you get home from school. Get rid of distractions when doing your homework, like your phone and the TV. 9. 4. Be on time. If your grandma is picking you up from school at 3 o'clock, be ready. And waiting when she comes. If you're going to be late for any reason, tell the person who's expecting you as soon as you can. 10. Try to be ready ahead of time. If your mom is picking you up at 6 from soccer practice, Try to be ready at 5.50. 11. If you have a hard time being ready for school on time, lay out. 
your clothes and pack your backpack the night before so you're not rushing around like crazy in the morning. 12. Part 3. Being Thoughtful Download Article 1. Weigh the pros and cons before making a decision. Part of being mature is making sound, reasoned decisions. Take a piece of paper, fold it down the middle, and list the pros of a decision on one side and the cons on the other. Think about how your decision will impact the people in your life. If the pros outweigh the cons, then it's probably a good decision. 13. Consider asking your parents for their advice. Don't be afraid to ask. They'll be happy that you value their thoughts. They'll be able to give valuable input, plus they'll be super impressed by your pro-con list. 2. Do little favors for your family members. Do kind things for your family members without them asking. You might make lunch for your little sister, take the dog for a walk or help your mom make dinner. Not only will you look mature, but your family members would thank you for your kindness. 3. Ask adults about their day. Ask your teacher, parents, or other adults how their day is going when you see them. This simple greeting shows you've got great manners, which can make you seem more mature. You could say, Hi, Mrs. Andrews. How has your day been so far? 4. Stick to your word. Mature people keep their promises. If you committed to helping your little brother with his homework after school, make sure you do it. To avoid broken promises and disappointed friends and family members, don't make promises that you can't keep. 14. Before you make a promise, think about all the things that could stop you from following through. If there are too many, you may not want to make the promise. Even small promises are important. If you told your dad you'd call him when you got to your friend's house, do it. Expert Q&A Question how can I be more mature in school? Caesar de Leon, M.ed. Educational Leadership Consultant. Expert Answer. You can display maturity by being prepared for class. That will automatically show maturity in the eyes of your teachers and your peers. Not helpful 11 helpful 42. Question. I do all these things and my parents still treat me like I'm five. How do I make them see I'm mature? Community answer. It may take time for your parents to realize that you're mature, so be patient. In the meantime, continue communicating openly, following their rules, and being kind. You may want to have a conversation with your parents asking for more independence and responsibility. Make sure you have a few go-to examples of mature behavior before you start the conversation. Not helpful 19 helpful 215. Question. If I dress like I'm older, will my parents think I'm more mature? Community answer. You may want to buy some more mature clothing items, but make sure your clothes are age-appropriate. Picking inappropriate clothing, like too short skirts or low-cut tops, may actually make your parents think you're less mature. Not helpful 35 helpful 200. See more answers. Acting more mature may help you get new privileges. Being mature is great, but remember to enjoy being a kid, too. When you believe you are mature, do not tell your parents. Show them you are mature. Let them see it in your actions and notice on their own. 
show more tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. Being mature does not mean smoking, drinking, doing drugs, or engaging in illegal activities. In fact, these things can actually make you seem more immature. How to cope with not having a cell. Phone. Download article. Methods. 1. Using other methods to communicate. 2. Asking your parents for a phone. 3. Occupying your time. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. Expert interview. References. Co-authored by Rebecca Tenzer, Matt, Ma, LCSW, CCTP, CGCS, CUTP, CCFP. Last updated, the 11th of January, 2024 References. You can feel cut off from the world if you lost your cell phone or do not have a cell phone. At all. It is even worse if all your friends have one, and you don't. As long as you have access to a device, you can talk, text, and video chat just like you have a cell phone. If you are a teenager, you can try to convince your parents to get you a cell phone. No matter what your situation is, occupy your time with other activities so you aren't constantly thinking about your phone. Method 1. Using other methods to communicate. Download article. 1. Try Google Voice. Google Voice is a free service that allows you to have your own phone number that you can use for voice calls and text messages. If you do not already have a Google account, you must create one before you can get a number. Once you have a Google account, click on the link that says Get a Voice number to get started. Follow all of the directions to set up your number up. 1. Once you have a number, you can call, text, and receive voice mails through the Google Voice website. You can also link your Google Voice number to a Google Hangouts account to use emoji and video chat. 2. 2. Use Facebook. Facebook allows you to call, text, email, and make video and voice calls. You can do all of this from a computer. Log into your Facebook account and turn on your chat. Select one of your friends that you want to talk to. Click the phone icon to start talking. Friends. If you are doing a video call, you will need to use Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, or Opera as your browser. 3. If you want to video chat. Click the video icon instead of the phone icon. 3. Text using an email address. Sign up for a free email account so that you can send and receive text messages from your friends. If you want to send a text message to someone's cell phone, you will need to know their 10-digit phone number and their phone carrier. Here are some examples for the most popular phone carriers, for at an T 10 digit phone number at text.att.net 2125556789 at text.att.net Alltel 10 digit phone number at message.alltel.com 2125556789 at message.alltel.com Boost Mobile 10 digit phone number at mboostmobile.com. 2125556789 at mboostmobile.com. Sprint 10 digit phone number at messaging.sprintx.com. 2125556789 at messaging.sprintx.com. T Mobile 10 digit phone number at momail.net. 
0212556789 at momail.net. Verizon 10 digit phone number at vdex.com. 2125556789 at vdex.com. Virgin Mobile USA 10 digit phone number at vmobile.com. 2125556789 at vmobile.com. US Cellular 10 digit phone number at email.usk.net. 2125556789 at email.usk.net. 4. Use a landline. If your house still has a landline, you can use it to make phone calls. You could then use your email address for text messages. When using a landline, be sure to check your caller ID for missed calls and voicemail messages. Everyone in your house will be able to hear the landline when it rings, and you will have less privacy. Try to call your friends first. Or always volunteer to answer the phone. If you give out your house phone number, make sure the person who is getting the number knows what phone they're calling so they don't freak and think they have the wrong number. If you are out, you can also use public phones at restaurants, stores, or offices. There may even be a pay phone nearby that you can use. 5. Borrow a friend's phone. If you have a friend that you spend a lot of time with, ask to use their phone. Do not give out your friend's number without getting their permission first. If you give the number to someone else, let them know that it is not your phone and to always ask for you before they start talking. You can also use your friend's phone to check your email while you are out. Try not to go crazy when you are borrowing someone else's phone. You do not want to get on the nerves or use their phone more than they do. Method 2. Asking your parents for a phone. Download article 1. Find a good time to talk. Choose a time when your parents are not busy and are in a good mood. This will increase your chances of getting what you want. A. Long car ride, sitting at the dinner table, or going for a walk are all good times to approach your parents. 5. You can say, hey do you have a minute? I wanted to talk to you about something, or let me know when you have some time. I wanted to talk to you about something. 2. Ask for a cell phone. Plainly tell your parents that you would like to have a cell phone and the reasons that you want a cell phone. If you are nervous about talking to them, write a letter that explains your reasons. You could say, I really would like a cell phone, and I wanted to tell you why this is a good idea. You could also say, I would love to have a cell phone. What do you think about that? 3. Talk about the benefits. Try to make the cell phone appealing to your parents. Talk about all of the positive things about having a phone. Some benefits you can highlight are, 6. A phone is good in case there is an emergency when your parents are not around. It will help you keep in touch with your family that lives out of town, or they will always be able to reach you when you are not at home. Having a cell phone can teach you to be responsible. Never tell your parents that you want a cell phone because all of your friends have one. 4. Be ready to compromise. Remember that your goal is to have a cell phone. It may not be the exact phone that you want, or you may not be able to talk and text as much as you would like. At the end of the day, having any cell phone is better than not having a phone at all. Some compromises you can suggest 
R7. To help pay for the phone. Get a flip phone instead of a smartphone. Get a prepaid phone instead of a phone with a contract. Agree to any rules or limitations your parents have. 5. Accept their answer. Be respectful of any answer that your parents give you. Don't whine, beg, yell, or have a bad attitude if they say no. Show your parents how mature you are by the way you handle their response. If you get upset because your parents said no, they will not want to get you a phone. Ask your parents about getting a phone again in a couple of months. In the meantime, do all of your chores, do well in school, and show how responsible you are. Method 3. Occupying your time Download article 1. Do activities you enjoy. Find some hobbies that occupy your mind and that you find fun. Reading, drawing, writing, listening to music, cooking, or watching movies. Activities that require you to think or use your hands are best. Your mind will be occupied, and you will not miss having a phone. You may join an after-school club or some sort of extracurricular activity such as roller skating that you find fun. This is a great way to socialize with other people who have your same interests. 2. Become a volunteer. Volunteering is a good way to show your parents that you are responsible and reliable. This is also an opportunity to give back to your community and help other people. Try to find volunteer opportunities that match with your interests. 8. For example, if you enjoy reading, you may volunteer at a local library. If you were interested in health care, you could volunteer at a local hospital or nursing home. 3. Spend time with friends and family. Cell phones often get in the way of making connections with other people. You can be so wrapped up in your phone that you spend less time developing relationships with the important people in your life. Instead of worrying about getting a phone, spend time with your family and friends. When you are spending time with people, Tell them that it is a no phone zone. This will keep everybody engaged, and you will not feel left out because you are the only one without a phone. 4. Spend time outdoors. Get outside and explore nature. You will have a more positive attitude and feel less stressed. Go for a walk, a hike, or exercise outside. Sit at the park and read or hang out with a friend. Take the time to really absorb the sights and sounds of nature while you are out there. 9. Expert Q&A Ask a question. Submit. Tips. There are also texting apps on iPods, iPads, and other forms of devices you can download to contact people. Write a list of pros and cons, with more pros, and show it to your parents. Doing so may get them to agree with you. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. How to give your life a Mackie over. Teen girls. Download article. Parts. 1. Making over your personal space. 2. Making over your school space. 3. Keeping up with your health and well-being. Plus show one more. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Related articles. References. Article summary. Reviewed by Grace Thomas. Last updated, the 18th of April, 2024 Fact Checked. Being a teenage girl is hard. Sometimes you just need a fresh start.
This WikiHow article will help you get to get back into a routine and get to that calm, organized, healthy state. Part 1. Making over your personal space. Download article. 1. Clean out your closet. Since your closet is one of the main things in your room, you need to make sure it is always kept clean. Get several big garbage bags and put the clothes in piles, throw away, give away, sell, laundry and clean. Put the dirty clothes into the washing machine forward slash hamper, while the clean clothes back in your closet after folding them and sorting them the way you want. This could be by color, style or usage rate. Hang up any shirts. T-shirts, dresses, sweaters, and cardigans etc. and fold up pants, jeans, leggings etc. 2. Clean your desk or working space. 1. Sort the things on your desk into three piles, keep, throw away, and give away. Do the same as what you did with your clothes. If your desk has drawers sort them out like you did the surface of your desk. Put back what you want to keep but make sure to organize it. And not put it back where it doesn't belong. 3. Remake your bed. Strip your sheets off the bed and throw them into the laundry. Get new sheets that you like and are comfortable to sleep on. And put them on the bed. It's good to have a comfortable bed. That also looks good. Arrange the pillows however you want it. 4. Organize any shelves or nightstands the way you did with your closet. Throw away, give away, sell and keep. Remember, whenever you put something back, put it back neatly. 5. Wipe any surfaces you have. They might be dusty. Part 2. Making over your school space. Download article. During recess or any free time, stay behind and organize your locker. Throw away anything you don't need, for example scrap paper. 2. Take away all the things that don't belong in a locker, like candy, wrappers or banana peels. Decorate. If you are allowed, stick wallpaper cuttings or wrapping paper on the walls of your locker, put stickers and photographs on the door. Part 3. Keeping up with your health and well-being. Download article. 1. Sit down and think, are you healthy? Most people will tell themselves that. They are when they know that some changes could be made to make them healthier. 3. 2. Make a food chart. It's a chart that says what you eat every day and at what time. This will organize your eating habits. Make sure that you follow what you written down and in between meals to snack on something healthy like an apple. 3. Exercising is extremely important to lead a healthy life. Find a sport you like such as swimming or softball, or go to the gym. You can even go to a nature sanctuary and hike, it's all considered exercise and will also lower stress. Level 4 4. Make sure your skin is healthy too, and go to a dermatologist if acne is a problem and use any medical cream that they give you. Wash your face every morning or night to feel refreshed and have clear and healthy skin. 5. Part 4. Improving your personal style and hygiene. Download article. 1. Organize your cosmetics. 2. Take the time to make sure your hair is nice. Consider straightening it the night before or sleep with curling ribbons, or even wake up a little bit earlier to 
Do that cool braid you have wanted to try. 3 3. Do your makeup. Cover any blemishes with a concealer a shade lighter than your natural skin tone and if you have dark circles under your eyes, apply some. There too. If you have an uneven skin tone, redness, light or dark patches, etc., use either tinted moisturizer, light foundation or ABB cream. For young skin, ABB cream works best because it moisturizes, protects and covers blemishes without looking thick and cakey. If you don't have naturally rosy cheeks, apply a small amount of blush, not a shimmery blush. For your eyes, use a primer or concealer on your lids to make your eye makeup last longer. If you would like, use a natural color tie shadow and forward slash or eyeliner. Curl your lashes and apply a black or brown mascara, but make sure you don't put too much on. Don't forget a little bit of clear or tinted lip gloss. 4. Set out clothes the night before, try them on to make sure it looks good. This saves you time in the morning or you can choose several clothing items or outfits and choose which one you want to wear the next day and the second outfit you can wear the next day. 5. Shower at least once or twice every day, especially during hot weather and after sports. 6. 6. Go to the salon. This is optional, but you should have your hair trimmed every Six weeks to prevent split ends and to help promote hair growth. If you have a picture of a hairstyle you like, take it to the salon and they will be able to do your hair similarly. 7. Do your nails. Paint them a nice color, or do a French manicure. Paint your nails with clear base coat polish or a French pink, and paint white tips on the Top of your nails. YouTube has many tutorials on nail art and manicures that are simple and easy to do. 8. Wax or shave, if you need to. Just remember, body hair removal is optional. Waxing can be a better option for you than shaving, although it takes more time and hurts a bit more, and you may break out if you are allergic. Not only does your hair vanish, it takes off any dead skin on the surface leaving your legs. Feeling gorgeous. Remember to wax at least once every three months or it'll hurt more the next time and your hair will grow back. 7. Expert Q&A Question. How can I create a new look for myself if I don't have lots of money? Grace Thomas Personal stylist. Expert answer. Try Rent the Runway or another peer-to-peer -peer rental company. For a low cost of $600 a month, you can rent 6 to 12 different items and test out what kind of thing to do for yourself. It's a great way to play around, give yourself a Mackey over. Every day to see if you like something before purchasing it. Another great way is thrifting or second-hand, you don't have to break the bank and you can try out some new styles that maybe you're a little bit scared to try. Not helpful 9 helpful 2. Question. Should I change to make people like me or just change for myself? Community answer. The only person you should be changing for is yourself, no matter how cliché it seems. Changing for yourself will help you feel happier and more confident, as opposed to changing for others. Changing for others is pointless, people come and go. The only person you have to face every day for the rest of your life is you, so you should be the person that you are proud to be. Not helpful 12 helpful 304. Question. 
How can I decide between the clothes that I need and the clothes that I don't need? Community answer. Simple. Try to think of the last time you wore each item. If it's been over a year, you probably don't need it anymore. Not helpful 17 helpful 213. See more answers. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Take time to be with your friends or they'll feel left out and ignored. Don't forget to study. School is very important. Remember to just be yourself. This is the best Mackie over any girl can have. Being kind and compassionate to others is more important than anything else. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. How to be the best girl ever. Download article. Parts. 1. Taking care of your body. 2. Taking care of your mind. 3. Taking care of your daily actions. Plus show one more. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Author info. Last updated, the 26th of May, 2024. Being the best person in the world isn't really possible, because everyone loves. Someone, everyone is good at something, everyone is different and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. However, aiming to be the closest you can to the best that you can be will ensure that your talents and abilities are brought forth. Part 1. Taking care of your body. Download article. 1. Look after yourself. Use basic grooming to stay clean and neat. Brush your hair regularly and keep it well washed. Brush your teeth at least twice a day. Avoid getting caught up in beauty regimes that suck away time you could be. Using more productively to play sport, read a book, get more sleep or invent a new life-changing product. Instead, find quick and easy ways that work best for your needs. Soap and water are just as good for keeping clean as any other product and they're cheaper and contain less unknown ingredients. Don't feel that you have to slather on shower gel, bath lotion or smelly products unless you really enjoy these items. 2. Stay in good shape. Join a sports team or just go for a run or jog every day or few days. Eat healthy, don't stuff yourself with junk food and sit at the computer all day. 1. Eat seasonal foods, these are nutritionally better for you as they haven't been stored as long. Eat locally, the food won't have traveled as far and will also be nutritionally good for you. Find a sport or form of exercise that works for you. Don't assume that you have to use the gym, jog or do crossfit if you don't enjoy them. There are plenty of ways to stay active and feel good about what you're doing to stay fit. Look for your preferred ones and link up with friends who also enjoy the same activities. If you don't want to go outside to exercise, know that you still could do simple exercises at home. You could do crunches, sit, ups, push ups, curl ups, and pull ups. You could also watch a fitness DVD and follow along with them. 3. Be informed about beauty products. Don't assume that you have to use them. And always be informed about what the products are made from and what the Ingredients might mean for your health and well-being. In some cases, products can cause allergic reactions, which is not healthy for you. Check out the safe 
Cosmetics website at https colon double forward slash www.safecosmetics.org forward slash and the skin deep. Cosmetics database at https colon double forward slash www.yug.org forward slash skin deep forward slash so that you can make informed choices about the makeup products you choose to use. Part 2 Taking care of your mind. Download article. 1. Keep your grades up. Have the best grades that you can by studying in a focused and purposeful manner. Try as hard as you can in school never think. It's just a test. Instead, think this is a test. What if it counts? Even if it doesn't. Count for much. I want to do the best that I can, for my own sake. 2. Use your intellect. Learn to think critically, ask questions and assume nothing. The world is filled with polarized opinions that cause arguments daily, and much of this is wasteful rather than productive because it assumes there are only two sides to any argument, when in actual fact there is often a multitude of Opinions, ideas and solutions. Seek them all out, so as to be well informed and fully aware. Learn to spot the difference between serious thinking and blabber moves. Always find out the facts before reaching conclusions about people, situations and incidents. If your school doesn't cater to critical thinking, look for online. Courses from reputable universities and colleges that do Take a Course in your own time 3. Be confident Loving who you are and knowing that you're beautiful without Having to change your body or yourself will help you to be more confident and Self-assured Say who you are and be what you say Realize that over time you may well change considerably and it's called maturing. Such personal growth is normal as you continue to learn more about yourself, other people and the world in general. You are always a work in progress, so be prepared to be a lifelong learner. If anyone suggests you are being fake or insincere for changing over time, be careful not to confuse this with the Natural changes every person undergoes and someone who is actually fickle enough to constantly change their mind. These are two very different things. Don't change for a boy or to be friends with the popular girls. Just be yourself. Make them like you for who you are. Not for you trying to act different. Just you. Any changes you do make should be made because you want to become the best that you can be, not because someone has criticized you. Learn to understand other people's motives. Not everyone has sincere or genuine reasons for suggesting you be a certain way. People have many reasons that are about themselves, such as jealousy, fear, a sense of living through someone else etc. Don't be afraid to probe other people's motivations and only accept criticism that is fair judgment and relevant to improving yourself. Part 3. Taking care of your daily actions. Download article. 1. Stay organized. Being organized is key to being the best girl ever. Even the prettiest and happiest girls can be caught up in clutter. Lay out your clothes. Every morning, make your bed, keep your room clean, and always have the project that is due ready for the next day at school. 2. 2. Take up relaxation exercises to keep you calm. This might be yoga, meditation, swimming laps of the pool going for a walk, etc. 
do whatever helps you to find a calm space amid the busyness of your life. This will allow you to cope with times of stress better, such as during exams or relationship breakups. 3. Relax. Daily meditation or affirmations can be useful for keeping you both relaxed and focused on the purpose that you've chosen for yourself. Part 4. Taking care of your relationships. Download article. 1. Be likable. Be likable by being best friends with everyone without preferring a clique. Try to be outgoing and happy, be a force for good around other people. Make friends, and stay busy. Not only will this make you the best, but it can increase your joy around other people and it can prevent stress. Avoid gossiping and the gossips. It's fine to share information and news with one another but don't embellish it and turn it into mean, thoughtless and unkind words about other people. You wouldn't like it if somebody insulted you so don't do it back. Some one day, it'll get back to them and it could easily also be you. Do not spread rumors instead, stop such things in their tracks. By demanding to know who would be so unkind to say such things and that you don't think there's an ounce of truth in. Second-hand news. Be a defender. Defend people who are in the weaker position by stating the obvious, that the bullying, thoughtless or mean person is being unkind, lacking in manners and is lacking in the facts. 2. Be involved. Keep up with trends, you don't have to follow them though. Just keep up with what's going on, keep up with the drama in school, just don't participate in it. Knowing what's going on will allow you to have your finger on the pulse, to avoid the drama and to be on top of anything that might affect you. 3. Listen to the things your parents say and ask of you. If you listen to them, they will appreciate your respect and will in turn listen to you as well. If you help your parents around the house and by being a good listener, they will treat you as responsible. This will benefit you greatly. Expert Q&A Ask a question. Submit Tips If you don't like a trend or don't want to do something popular girls are doing, you don't have to. You can still be popular and fun while keeping your own style. Haters will always exist. They are the insecure, the weak-minded, the intellectually lazy and they hang around in packs. Use their meanness to spur you. On to to goodness, always. Don't take any of it personally even if they hit a sore spot. Realize they're just spotting in you what they cannot deal with inside of themselves. In other words, such persons are actually quite perceptive and therein lies something that eventually you can kindly suggest they may wish to attend to within themselves. Just be sure to wait for the right moment though. When it's going to have the greatest impact. Beware of people who claim you are too sensitive, too shy, too loud and goodness knows what else. Who made them the arbiter of the ideal girl? Their own prejudices, and nothing more. Brush it off, you're who you are and you're always striving to improve on that. Show more tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. Don't bully other people. It will only ruin someone else's self-respect and make you look bad. Don't ever boss people about because it will not help you in being a better person. There will always be jealous people who don't like the way you dress or what. 
you do but you just have to ignore them and try to surround yourself with the people that you love. How to choose what you want to be when you grow up. Download article. Find your passion early so that you can get on the right path for you. Parts. 1. Discovering your gifts. 2. Assessing your options as a young adult. 3. Finding a position you love. Other sections. Questions and answers. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Mel Shipman. Last updated, the 30th of June, 2024 references. As a young child, our dreams are limitless. We want to be a firefighter, an astronaut, an actor, a doctor, and a pop singer all at the same time. As you grow and start seriously. Considering your professional future, it's important to preserve that passion and self. Confidence. Confucius had the right idea when he said, choose a job you love, and you will never have to work a day in your life. 1. Part 1. Discovering your gifts. Download article. 1. Get moving. Do you enjoy trying different kinds of sports, or climbing all over? Jungle gyms. Maybe you're a hands-on kid, spending your free time building forts and horsing around with your friends. You might be the strongest and fastest person in your school. Believe it or not, these fun, physical things that you love could all become a career. For example, professional athletes make money playing their favorite sport. While people like coaches, referees, and sports medicine doctors all build their careers around sports too. Construction workers and mechanics get to work all day with their hands, building and fixing things from the ground up. Having a job doesn't always mean sitting at a desk all day. There are plenty of fun and active jobs for people who like to be on their feet. 2. Embrace and grow your love of math and science. This might sound boring. But these classes in school can help you find your future job. Do you especially enjoy learning about and using logic and fact? Take note. Math and science. Skills are amazing skills to carry into a career. Inventors, scientists, economists engineers, and computer programmers were all once students just like you, who now work with numbers, facts, and logic in their careers. Even if your adult job isn't based in math or science, these skills can help in all sorts of professions. 3. Make things and let your imagination run wild. Draw, write, paint, entertain and create. If you'd rather daydream, do crafts, tell stories, or make music than learn facts and figures, that's okay. Embrace your dreams and work hard on the things you do enjoy. There are so many careers for people just like you. Artists, authors, actors, musicians, and designers are all Professions that require creativity, among hundreds of others. 4. Embrace the things you love wholeheartedly. If you want to spend all of your free time cooking with your parents in the kitchen, playing with the family, dog outside, or watching over your younger siblings, continue doing those things. Your hobbies and your passions are things that can turn into your career one day if you work hard and allow your interests to flourish. They can be great indicators of what you excel in and love. Think about why you enjoy the hobbies that you do. If you love playing with your pets, maybe you'd make a great veterinarian or animal trainer one day. 
If you enjoy taking care of your younger siblings, you might be a caretaker, a teacher, or a mentor when you grow up. Quiz Wiki how quiz, what am I good at? Sometimes it's tough to figure out your true calling in life. You might end up asking yourself, what am I really good at? Do I have any skills worth honing? The answer is, you absolutely do. Although nothing may be coming to mind right now, we're here to help shine a light on your best and most impressive talents. 1 of 12. How do you work under pressure? I'm a chill person, even under pressure. I get very anxious under pressure. I rely on rationality and logic to work through the pressure. I excel under pressure. Next. Part. 2. Assessing your options as a young adult. Download article. 1. Don't be afraid to leave your comfort zone. Sign up for the public speaking class that intimidates you, or apply for the internship you think you'll never get. An unexpected opportunity could lead you straight to your dream job. 2. The worst thing you can do is to let fear or intimidation stop you from taking the first step. 3. When you're young, you have much more freedom with how you spend your time. Use it trying everything you can and learning all about the things that interest you. 4. Lee Michelle, the world-famous star of Glee, got her start on Broadway by accident. She accompanied her friend to an audition and then auditioned herself as a joke. 2. Listen to your gut. It's easy to get wrapped up in the opinions of other people. Or follow the plan that others have mapped out for you. There will always be people judging your choices. And there will always be family members, teachers, friends, and even strangers telling you what you should do. 5. However, only you know which career path is right for you. Don't disregard the advice you get from those who care about you. They usually want the best for you and may have more life experience than you. At the same time, don't give up on a dream or shy away from a goal just because others may not believe in it. 3. Practice, practice, practice. You should do this whether it is something you love but aren't great at, or something you are naturally good at. It doesn't even have to be a clear-cut skill, like a sport or a subject in school. 6. Ask yourself. Are you the person all your friends come to when they need advice? Do you have a soft spot for all animals? Do you love being a project leader in school? Once you find something you're good at or enjoy, take the time to perfect it. For example, if you are good at giving advice, consider taking psychology classes. Four. Be realistic and be patient. Dream big and stay optimistic about your future. But remember that only hard work and patience will get you where you want to be. 7. Many people who love their career now may not have loved it when they started out. 8. While it would be great to obtain your dream job on your first try, you often have to figure out which industry you want to be in first, and then work your way up the ladder. Part 3. Finding a position you love. Download article. 1. Take career assessment tests. If you have no idea where to start the process of choosing a career, these tests are perfect for you. There are all different kinds of tests that can measure your skills and interests and point you toward a fitting career. Your results aren't your only options, but they can be helpful. 
suggestions to get you on the right track. Some tests examine your natural abilities by asking you questions with right or wrong answers. Others have more open ended questions and analyze your personality. You can find a lot of great career assessment tests online with just a quick Google search. If you want more options, ask your school counselor or a teacher for help. 2. Write down all of your strengths and passions. Underneath each one, jot down different jobs or careers that utilize that particular skill. By writing all of this down, you will be able to organize your thoughts and better visualize your opportunities. 9. Cross off careers that seem totally unappealing to you, and circle ones that you want to learn more about. Pay attention to jobs that are listed more than once in other words, jobs that utilize multiple skills or interests that you have. These things can be general. For example, if you write compassionate list things like doctor, teacher, social worker, etc. under it. For something more specific, you could write great at science. Listed underneath that skill may be things like chemist, doctor, computer programmer, etc. Think about how your strengths can translate into different jobs. For example, just because you're a good singer doesn't mean you have to become a famous singer. You could be a producer, music teacher, talent recruiter, and more. 3. Think about the lifestyle you want when you grow up. Do you want a job that requires you to travel seven days a week, or do you want the freedom to work from home? Think about your priorities in a job or career, and don't feel ashamed of your honest answers. You may be willing to choose a job you aren't personally interested in if it comes with a great salary. On the other hand, you may prioritize your enjoyment of a job over the money you will be making. Everyone is different, and you have to decide what is most important to you. Your priorities may change over time. Don't be afraid to explore different paths. 4. Research specific information about the industries you are interested in. Learning anything and everything you can about a particular industry can help you decide if that one is right for you. You can determine which specific skills are most important in that field so that you can develop and perfect them. You should also determine the education level or specialized certifications you will need. By investigating deeper, you can even figure out how employable you may be in a particular field or if you may need a backup plan. 5. Find a mentor. Once you've narrowed down the jobs and careers that interest you most, try to find someone in that field. It is massively helpful to talk to someone who has the job you want, and to ask them all the questions you need to know. Learn how they got to where they are, and what they wish they knew when they were younger. Ask them what their typical day is like, and if possible, shadow them for a day. By walking in the footsteps of someone who has your dream job you can learn more about it and decide if it really seems right for you. 10. Finding a mentor in your chosen field can also offer you a valuable networking opportunity. Having the right connections can put your resume at the top of the stack once it comes time to apply for the job. 11. Community Q&A Question. I want to do two different things, how do I choose? Community answer. Learn as much as you possibly can about both. You will learn the pros and cons.
of each one, and this can help make your decision. If possible, talk to people who currently have the jobs you have in mind, and they can answer further questions. You may have. Remember, you are never locked into a career. If you try one of the options and you don't like it, try the other. It's never too late to explore your options. Not helpful 8 helpful 72. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published.